Hello and welcome to another day on Cornwall Pocket Farm where I try and figure out how to live sustainably on 300 square metres in the city. So my garden is really quite small. If you've watched any of my videos you'll know that I don't have a lot of space. And so my challenge always is how can I do what I want to do in such a small space? That's the challenge of a pocket farm, which, which actually I find makes it really exciting and really interesting because it really makes you think and be creative. So I've come up with a range of ways that I get compost because obviously if I'm growing my own food, compost is a really important part of that system, you know, to, to, for the health of the soil and really to um, provide that organic matter. So, so how do I do that without any compost bins? When I designed the garden, of course I did a load of research and I saw all these gardens and farms that had amazing sort of four bin compost systems and I really tried hard to squeeze it into the garden somewhere but I really couldn't find anywhere that it would fit because it needs to be sort of easily accessible and close to the growing areas. It's also really ugly so my garden is mainly my front garden so I don't really want an ugly compost system in the in my front garden. The only other option was to try and get it somehow around the back and then the access was really poor so I really couldn't figure out how to get in a dedicated compost bin system. I did try with one of those Daleks uh, at one point but I found that I could only really fit in one or maybe two compost bins and they didn't really work terribly well and they created a lot of, well they created a lot of work to be honest because you have to sort of turn them and mix them and, and there was a lot to do with this compost system and it took up that space and it was ugly. So in the end I've come up with a range of different ways of accessing that uh, nutritious organic material that I need for my garden without any compost bins at all. And this is actually uh, quite timely, shall we say, because I've just had my food scraps bin delivered by the council. It's a new system that Auckland Council is um, rolling out, where basically all households have these little bins uh, that they put all their food scraps in, and then you put it out on the side of the road for council collection, like we do with our landfill bin and our recycle bin. So mine's been delivered yesterday, um, but I don't have anything to put in it. <laughs> all I don't have any food scraps to spare. I use all of my food scraps in my garden. It comes inside with a little sort of bench top caddy. Of course, all of these things are plastic. And I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not the only person that's not going to want this big plastic caddy on my bench top. So there's going to be a lot of those floating around somewhere, probably going to landfill. But anyway, um, I've got this little plastic caddy. I don't know what to do with that. And then I've got the larger sort of food scraps bin, which is supposed to go on the side of my road. I don't know what to do with that. So the only thing I've really come up with at the moment is maybe I could make maybe make some comfrey tea in it for the garden, something like that. I actually avoid plastic. Um, if you've watched my videos, you, you'll know. I, I try and avoid new plastic. I do have plastic that I use in my freezer, but all of that I have got secondhand from charity shops. And apart from that, I avoid new plastic like the plague. So yeah, it's, yeah. I don't really want this new plastic bin. I don't want either of them, to be honest. I don't want the bench top caddy and I don't want this food scraps bin, but I have them. So what can I use them for? What, what purpose can I put those to? So if you have any ideas, please put it in the comments below because at the moment they're just floating around and I'm desperately trying to think about what to do with it and where I can put it. <laughs> anyway, let's go in the garden and I'll show you my compost systems. Okay, so this is my first and my primary compost system. When I take vegetables out of the garden, I wash them at the sink, walk around here, strip off the bits I don't need, and throw them here onto this compost pile. The chickens then work through that and turn it and do a really quick job of turning it into compost. And they also add their special ingredient, which makes it break down even faster. And then I just basically turn it and I move it down into the rest of the the chicken coop 
And then once a year, we dig out this chicken coop and this compost goes onto the garden. And you can barely see this compost system. Most people don't even know it's here. And the best thing about it is the chickens do all the work. This is my next compost system. If you have a look at my chicken coop tour video, you'll see that the chickens have a sort of a platform underneath their perch. And obviously overnight when they do most of their business, it basically falls down into the wood shavings that I cover that platform with. And then I basically go and clear that out, the, the wood shavings and the chicken poo, and put it into those buckets. And it, this is a long, slow process. amazes me I can stand at the bus stop for half an hour and no bus turns up but as soon as you want to start filming there's masses of them all coming past the house anyway <laughs> back to what I was saying I'm just trying to think it probably probably takes about four months I would say for them to come through those boxes so basically those wood shavings counteract the sort of the intensity if you like of that chicken poo and together they break down really well. So the other things I did to adjust these boxes is I made these lids out of some scrap wood that we had on the carport just so that they lift off and on right quite easily. So that basically seals the top and I can put something on the top like that. The other thing was that I added um, insect mesh into these, these handle holes here for when they were hobby boxes and I just basically put some mesh and glued it onto the inside just so that we wouldn't get flies inside as it was breaking down. And then the last thing I did was I drilled little holes all along the sides and also on the base just to release any liquid and let it get a little airflow going through. But, but I made these holes quite small, small so again it wouldn't attract um, large flies. I think sort of little tiny insects can probably get in there but they don't cause a, um, much of an issue. So yeah they seem to work. I've got, I've got six of these. I use this one because it's easiest to get at and I fill this one up first and then I just move them around so that when they get to the bottom of the second stack it's finished basically and generally it's growing seedlings at that stage. Hello girls, are you wondering what I'm doing? Yes, I'm showing them the chicken poo compost system. <laughs> and then that last box, when it's growing seedlings, it goes onto the carport and I generally use that material in my potato buckets to grow potatoes. It's still quite rich but I mix it up with some other forms of compost and that works really well. Once it's been through the potato buckets, to be honest, it could end up anywhere on the property. So the other thing that I put in my chicken poo hobby box system is anything like um, onions, citrus, anything like that that doesn't go into a normal composting system and certainly the girls wouldn't appreciate that material in their run. And it breaks down really well with the chicken poo and the wood shavings. This is my compost system in situ if you like. So I compost in the paths. This material is generally wood chippings. I get this this particular lot that's on at the moment, that came from the neighbours. They were basically pruning their hedges and um, doing some pruning around their property and just chipping it through their chipper. And they just, basically their young lads, just delivered it round for us and I put it in the pass. This will break down as we walk on it. It gives quite a good surface and it breaks down and then when it starts to grow things in it, then I'll either pop it into the chicken coop to finish off or I'll throw it straight onto the garden beds if it's broken down enough. The other advantage of having wood chips in your paths is that it encourages fungi in your garden and the mycelium ne networks are really important for the health and the growth of your plants. So by having this material here, quite often I'll see like some white stuff through it and that's those mycelium networks really uh, doing their, their thing. So yeah, it breaks down really well here underfoot. And if I have any other material that I want to break down in situ, I actually just dig a little hole in here and put it underneath the wood chips. That rots down with everything else. And this here is what I call my banana bed compost. <laughs> this compost system will take things like uh, rhubarb leaves and rose prunings, anything sharp that I don't want to go into the chicken run. 
Bananas really like a very compost rich, moist soil. And so just by putting this compost here, it's out of the way, you don't really see it too much in the garden and it provides that organic matter. It's not the compost that comes out, but it is one of my compost systems for the material that I can't put in any of my other compost systems. So this is just a bit of a cheat. It's not technically compost that I have made on this property, but it is still very easy access compost and completely free for anybody that lives in a sort of an urban environment like I do. This is my neighbor's ex-grass pile. So we started having all of their grass clippings to mulch our beds. And because we were having all of that and their prunings, their hedge prunings, their any tree pruning that they did, all of that material we take from them. They don't need to figure out what to do with it and we get a valuable resource. But of course what they had was the old grass pile that they where they used to put their grass clippings. And that was then just redundant and uh, a waste of space for them. So one weekend we went round there and we dug out their, their ex-grass pile, which over many years has broken down into beautiful rich organic matter. And basically we brought it round here and put it into one of, one of these old wool sacks. And this is a great source of compost for me. I do have to filter through to make sure there's nothing like plastic or rubbish or anything like that that might be in there. But it's excellent material and it was completely for free. And while we were doing it, the neighbor over the fence from, from theirs, their neighbor, said, asked what we were doing and then said, oh, I've got a grass pile, you can have that too. So we're really not ever gonna run out of neighbor's grass piles because everybody has one, it seems. Another thing that I do is what you might call chop and drop. So these are the old asparagus ferns. And when they had all dried off and gone brown, I basically just chopped them off at the base and laid them down on the bed. These will break down now over the winter. And I'm not using this space for anything else, A, because this is a perennial crop, so it's here all the time. And plus this part of the garden is really shady in the winter because of this fence. So by lying it on the ground, it keeps any weeds down, it provides habitat for insects, and it will just rot down naturally over the winter. In a couple of months, probably what I'll do is I'll put some compost on top of here, but they'll generally have broken down pretty well by then. And then it'll be ready for the new asparagus spears to come through in spring. So I've squozen you into the back of my house here. I've got a very small little alley that runs down the back of my house. And what we've squeezed in here, right next to the back door, is our worm bin. Now it's not technically compost, granted, but it is what I do with the waste scraps that come out of this ki the kitchen. This is a hungry bin. I really like this system. It's very neat and clean. Um, my husband just clears it out at the bottom every now and again, and it also provides some worm tea at the bottom, which I use on the garden. Um, it's been raining, so there's probably going to be a few worms at the top here, so look away if you don't like worms. But basically, as you can see, it's going great guns. And also down the back of my house, I have this compost system. This is my dog poo compost system. <laughs> so I have two terracotta pots, which I have sunk into the ground. And I actually drilled some holes in the sides of the terracotta pot. And then I've put a, um, one of the terracotta saucers on the top. And I fill one, and when that's full, I move over and fill the other. And by the time that's full, I can come back and dig out this first one. Now, I don't put this compost anywhere near my food producing plants. This purely goes, um, it generally goes around the trees that are on the berm or around my purely decorative plants. So as you can see, I really have no spare scraps to put in my food bin and I really have no organic material at all that leaves my property. To be honest, if anything, I import organic material from other people's properties. Anyway, I'll say goodbye and I'll see you next time.